اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و آله الطاهرین ورس نمبر 32 اف سوره النساء ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض للرجال نصيب من مكتسب وللنساء نصيب من مكتسبن واسألوا الله من فضله إن الله كان بكل شيء عليما Do not covet the advantage which Allah has given some of you over others To men belongs a share of what they have earned and to women a share of what they have earned and ask Allah for his grace indeed Allah has knowledge of all things this verse and the following verse in a sense concludes what was mentioned before with regards to the laws of inheritance and also transactions and whatever was related to financial matters in this regard however Especially this verse takes the discussion one level further and deeper. It addresses the root of the matter rather than the practical issues. The previous verses, of course, instructed us that what should we do when we are faced with these relations and how much should be given to who. Here, it says that you should not even think about other people's rights to come to you. Not even think about it. And even the differences about men and women, because we had all these differences about men inheritance, women inheritance, do not covet and do not entertain in your mind that you you should have had something like what others have. Now the last two verses, especially the last two verses, were about practical measures against the life and property of others. And this verse is actually forbidding even entertaining or instructing us not to even entertain such a thought in our mind. So it's provides a preventative measure by offering a proper mindset and inclination. So it's very beautiful. لَا تَتَمَنَّوا مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ Do not entertain such thoughts. Do not wish for something which you cannot attain no matter how much you try. There are things which are in hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ask him rather than entertaining such thoughts. And this actually disciplines oneself, disciplines one's thoughts. And one will become at peace within. And uh, that peace within will bring a peaceful, peaceful life outside. So it's a beautiful conclusion for what the previous verses were talking. Now, going to the details of the verse, لا تتمنوا, do not covet, or do not wish. Some commentators say that تتمنوا, تمني, تمني means wish for, desire something which is far-fetched, desire something which is usually not attainable. Now, some commentators say that tamanni is to feel sorry about something which we cannot attain in future, or having desire for it which is far-fetched, and tahalluf is to feel pity about something which has passed, and we have missed it. Now, anyhow, what, whatever the meaning of tamanni and tahalluf, the verse says, لا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض. It tells us that there are certain things 
which Allah has even either in creation or in legislation has given advantage to some over others. Well, in creation is very clear. Of course, women have some advantages over men and men have some advantage over women. And therefore, uh, it is silly to even think that such advantages should all come to one side. It's not in our hand, in creation. For example, women can give birth, can have this motherly feeling, which is uh, very beautiful. And then Allah says the heaven is under the feet of the mothers, all these things. And for men, of course, there are other advantages. And these balance each other with each other and match each other in a nice way in society, in social life. Now, it is not reasonable for people to wish these advantages, either to have both advantages or to exchange these advantages. This is in creation and also in legislation. For example, Allah has legislated that the men should have uh, twice as inheritance of women and on the other hand, they have to pay for the expenses of the family, for example. So this is the advantage of the women that they have to be provided by the husband no matter whether they are rich or poor, and on the other side, they have half the share of inheritance. So it says these, these advantages, fadl, that Allah has given to each of you, you have to be content with what Allah has given you, whether it's in legislation or in is, it is in creation. And, uh, uh, the, the interesting thing about this verse is that the same thought that comes to our mind here in this time and age came to the mind of women and men uh, in, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Although the society has changed, but people's thoughts haven't changed. About the occasion of revelation. We cannot say that reason of revelation. Maybe occasion of revelation is a better term here. Of this verse, several uh, uh, ideas have been suggested. However, two of them I mention here. One is that uh, Umm Salama, Salamullah alayha, the wife of the Prophet, Umm al-Mu'mineen, قالت يا رسول الله يغزو الرجال ولا نقزي ولا نقاتل ولا فنست ولا نقاتل فنستشهد وإنما لنا نصف الميراث. He said, يا رسول الله, what is this? The men can go to war, can go to jihad, they can be killed and become martyrs. Why? Well, this is a very, very great and glorious position, and we are not allowed to do that, or we are not necessarily need to go. It's not wajib on us as, as it's wajib on men. And apart from that, we take half the inheritance. And this cannot be the reason for revelation of this verse. Maybe, I mean, these questions are answered by this verse. Or in another narration we have that... Uh, it has been revealed about the inheritance, about Mawarith. And, well, I don't know whether this is correct or not, but a very sort of frivolous thought which came to the mind of men at the time. They said that uh, we hope, as Allah has given us advantage in this world, in mirath, in the inheritance, also because we are doing good things and we are going to jihad as well, Allah would m multiply twice our 
uh, hasanat, our good deeds as well. And we have this father over them in akhirah as we have it in dunya. And the women said, as I said, this is a bit frivolous, but very interesting. And it shows the, the mindset of people will not just simplistically accept all these things. And the women said, we hope that our burden in Akhira is half the burden of men because Allah has given us half the inheritance. And so this verse is addressing that issue. And other things have been mentioned as well, which we just uh, ignore here. I, I just mentioned these two to put us in the context of the type of mindsets of men and women at the time. Especially what the women said is very interesting, that we hope that our burden on the Day of Judgment is half the burden of men because of the advantage that Allah has given them uh, over us in the matter of inheritance. Anyhow, لَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضَ This tamanni, this wishful desire is something which brings about corruption in society. People are not content with their creation. As they are not content with the legislation of God regarding to each one, especially nowadays we see about this this gender issue that people should be given the right to choose which then gender they they want to be and in some countries it's legislated i heard this i don't know whether this is true or not that people should not be registered as male or female until the age uh, of maturity and they choose for themselves which gender they want to be i mean these are, this verse is addressing this very clearly. That you are created differently. And both in terms of creation and legislation. And of course legislation, legislation is something which is dependent on creation. You have differences. And you should not wish for that. This corruptive thoughts is addressed by the verse and just imagine if everyone in the society covets to have the father of others the advantages that others have what type of society we will have and especially the expression la tathamanna umma fadlallahu bihi ba'dakum ala ba'd these advantages are measured, bestowed by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah has bestowed these, these advantages. And it, it doesn't mean that men have advantage over women or women have advantage over men. Ba'dakum ala ba'af. Some of you over, over others. And this ba'dakum ala ba'd as well has another very delicate meaning. And that is, you're all, you're all one. You shouldn't envy each other. You shouldn't cover for what Allah has given of his grace to some people. And unfortunately, unfortunately, of course, this is what usually people entertain in their hearts. So, first of all, this fuzz is from Allah and you have to submit to these differences. You have to accept them and concede to them. And secondly, even if something is given to your brother or your sister in faith, or brother and sisters in, in creation, you're all one creation. Why I should think that Allah should give everything to me and deprive others? Yeah, well, he has given different things to different people. And at the end of the day, we are all one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the extent that I am created by him and I feel that he has to give me some father, 
others have been created by him and he gives them of their fast of his fast as well the first continues to men belongs a share of what they have earned and to women a share of what they have earned now there are two things about this uh, this word اكتساب, اكتساب. we have in the Quran you may have come across kasaba or kasabu very frequently this is used uh, as something that people earn as their actions and what they earn for for akhirah our there is a subtle difference between kasb and iktisab iktisab is another form of the, the verb kasb iktisab is something which what earns and uses for himself while kasb may be more general may be something which they earn and they use it themselves or others may use it as well so iktisab is more personal however of course these could be uh, used interchangeably this is what Raghab says in his uh, in his book Raghab al-Isfahani now uh, it talks about earning but it's not purely about earning things as we earn for example uh, our salary or we earn our uh, our share from the uh, from the work or anything like that it may it may apply to earnings of what Allah has given us as well not on a voluntary basis if he has created me a man Allah mentions this as an iktisab I have gained it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I've earned it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also what I do according to what Allah has legislated these are my earnings as well for the women the same thing so it is the result of one's specific creation and also one's uh, struggle uh, efforts to earn things in this world so for each of them there is a nasib there's a share and you as the, the previous sentence says you should not covet each other for them for these differences rather turn your attention to Allah because these graces these favors are bestowed by him so if you really want something which you do not have and you have strong wish for it Allah ask Allah for his grace ask Allah for his father father means what is in in excess what is what someone really doesn't need and since Allah doesn't need anything whatever he gives is his father he doesn't need anything himself so whatever he gives is his fast so uh, usually also why even when people give something to each other it's called father as well because of that the, 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 the root of the meaning what is extra we give it to others for example anyhow Every advantage you see in others is all given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should you covet? Why should you really want to take it from them? While you can tap on the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him, Was'alullah min fadlihi. Was'alullah min fadlihi. Inna Allah kana bi kulli shay'in alima. Now, what's Allah min fadlih? 
Does it mean that you really ask what Allah has given to women or women ask what Allah has given to men? No. You ask him the grace that he may give and you are not aware of. You don't ask him to take away the grace from others. You ask the grace of Allah for yourself and for others. He doesn't say, which fast is this? What sort of advantage? What sort of grace? And this teaches us two lessons. First of all, the first lesson is that we, for every, maybe three lessons actually, for everything which comes to our mind and we have desire to have them the first lesson is turn to God for it don't turn to people don't tire for self, yourself don't tire yourself to just uh, purposelessly go here and there and do every wrong and corruption to attain them just turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the first lesson the second lesson is that since father is not determined which father is it, it means that you don't know what is good for you, what is bad for you. You don't know what is khayr, what is shar. And therefore, you ask for his fazl and leave it to him. He will tell you what he will give you. He will tell you, and this is corroborated by the next sentence, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا He knows everything. He has knowledge of everything. So, uh, because, because he has the knowledge of all things, we just have to ask what is good for us and, and, and that's all. And when we just ask, Ya Allah, give me, your father, he knows what to give us. Just like uh, the verse, وَأَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَأَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ You may uh, dislike something but it's good for you or like something but it's not good for you. And in a Hadith Qudsi we have, O son of Adam, O son of Adam, obey me in what I have commanded you and do not teach me what is in your interest. I know what is in your interest. I have brought you to this life to guide you and guidance comes through ups and downs, difficulty and ease. It, it, you have to so, show your inner jewel by going through these things so he knows it better and also Allah min fadlihi has another advantage here and that is uh, when God tells you Allah, it means that he wants to respond to it he wants to respond otherwise he wouldn't say Allah min fadlihi now May, the points are increasing actually. Another point is that when you, when it, it says, was Allah min fadlih, it means do not ask him something which is against his wisdom. His wisdom is to create men and women differently and do not ask him something which is not based on his wisdom, whether in legislation or in creation. And unfortunately, most of us are asking him things which is against his wisdom in legislation. Now, means that he knows what he should give you. He knows what is in your heart. He knows your desires. And if you ask him something which is not against his wisdom, and certainly you have to give it. There's one, he, 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 you have to be, re, you have to receive it. There's one very beautiful hadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Qala nabi 
sallallahu aleyhi ve aleyhi ve sellem men temenna şey'en ve huve lillahi rıza lem yahruj mined dunya hatta yu'ta if one wishes anything from God that is in accordance with God's pleasure and his pleasure is based on his wisdom certainly he will not leave this world unless God grants him his wish wow wow this 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 means what this means that Allah will never reject anyone in what they desire from him ask from him unless if it is not based on his wisdom he never rejects anyone and this is what actually we expect from him it's a very delightful promise that our all generous all gracious Lord would never reject us in what we ask him uh, there is this beautiful anecdote of Abu Hamza as Somali which I have mentioned this before but to because of the uh, relevance here I mentioned again that he says that he had a daughter and she fell and broke her hand. Uh, he took her to to a doctor and to look at the hand and the doctor said the hand is broken. And when he went to bring the jabar, those uh, there were those woods at the at the time putting on on a on a broken uh, arm or, or a broken bone called Jabira and the wudu of Jabira comes from that as well. So he went to bring the Jabair and I was standing there and why when I heard that the hand is broken a sort of rekha, pity uh, entered my heart. So great it was. I started to cry and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would heal that. The doctor came out and again examined the hand to see where he, ha he has to put this jabira and surprisingly he found no, bro no brokenness at all. The bone was not broken. The second time he examined and he was surprised, Abu Hamza was surprised. And uh, when he met Imam Ja'far al-Sadr alayhi salam, he said to him that uh, uh, such a thing happened and it was very amazing uh, the Imam said Qala ya Abu Hamza wa faqad dua ar-rida fas tujiba laka fi asra min tarfata ayn your dua matched the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly what we had in our previous hadith that if huwa lillahi rida your dua matched the rida of Allah and it was responded in a blink of an eye. Very beautiful story mentioned here. Another hadith uh, which is related to this subject from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Indeed God does not like people insisting on request from one another. But he likes that, that he likes that for himself. Indeed, God loves to be asked and besought for what is with him, with Father. Was Allah min fadlihi? And we have in the Ten Commandments something which is very closely related to this verse. La tatamannaw. مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضِ Do not covet what Allah has given to some of you as an advantage over others. Now this is a very beautiful and concise sentence. It has been mentioned in the Ten Commandments in, in the Bible in this way, in a more elaborate way, but of course not as beautifully as is mentioned here. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
nor his manservant, nor, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Well, of course, this is very particular about neighbors and about particular things, but the verse here is very general. La tatamannu ma fadzalallahu bihi ba'dakum ala ba'd. Inshallah, Allah will give us the ability, the resolve to uh, always turn to Him rather than having such wishful thoughts. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ حديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين